have to admit, folks, that I am a geek. They used, they used, it's true. It's true. There used to be a day when the word geek had, you know, uh, a bad meaning. But, but nowadays, actually, it's kind of cool to be a geek. Dave's a geek. Dave's a geek. I'm a geek. And, and, and the reason I, that I believe I am a geek is because I absolutely love technology. I really do. I know I complain a lot about technology. I know I blame some of the ills of society on technology. But I just think it is so cool that in this little thing right here, we have so much capacity. That, and technology is always moving forward. It's not like it just stands still. It's always moving forward, and it's always something new, and you can always kind of do more with less. I mean, I got pages and pages and pages of apps, and then inside of those app pages, I got more apps, and inside of those things, I got more apps. It's, it's amazing. I love it. And it's not like it used to be. I mean, you, remember, you, you guys remember the, the old dinosaur computers that you had to sit at your desk, right? They were like this tall and this big, and they had fans that probably could heat your house. And then if you ever wanted to go online, you guys remember that awful noise, right? I'm not going to do my impression of a modem, but you all, all I have to do is say the word, and anybody who's ever used one hears it immediately going off in their mind. Now all that stuff is right here. Or in a laptop like this that's really small and slick. And they don't even put DVD drives in laptops anymore because that's kind of a thing of the past. I remember when I got my first iPhone, um, I, I was blown away by this thing this iPhone. And the amazing thing was is that I didn't really know what an iPhone could do then. I just thought whatever came with it, you know, that's what you had. And then I discovered the App Store. The first app I downloaded, don't hate me for this, was an app called, you might want to close their ears, was called iFart. <laughs> True story, I mean, that's, that's, that's your lead pastor right there. And, and, and the whole purpose of the iFart app was to make fart noises. But then I discovered that there were actually some pretty uh, cool things about the app store and technology, and you could get things that actually did things that made your life easier and better. And now I can't really live without it, and most of us can't. But you know what I hate? Updates. Seems like every other day they're telling me I need to update something. My operating system needs to be updated, and, and depending on what phone you have or what laptop you have or what computer you have, you know, that update process is always something different, so what might work here doesn't work there. It just bugs me. I mean, I wish they could just automatically do it in the background. I mean, I'm sure they probably can. I just don't know about it. Dave knows. He, he could tell me if it could automatically do that, but, but, but it takes forever, and then you got to wait for that little bar to go across your screen. You can't use your phone for like an hour. And then I end up having to update like half the apps on my phone because now there's a new operating system. Some of them update automatically. Or if you're really like me, you just ignore all the reminders that say new operating system available and you just go. Because I'm convinced that, especially with Apple products, I'm convinced that you know, as the phone gets older and they put those operating system updates on there, they intentionally make it slower so that you go out and buy their brand new phone so they can start the process all over again. So I just kind of go away. And the problem with when you, uh, when you don't update or, or even when you update is sometimes you open up an app and it says, this app is not compatible with your operating system, right? Happens on computers all the time. I mean, I'm a software writer, so sometimes I'll write something and then some other piece of software gets affected by that says, not compatible. And, and I'm not sure really which side each falls on, whether life imitates technology or technology imitates life, but, but I do believe there's a lot of similarities between our lives and technology. I mean, think about your life as your operating system, right? Your operating system. Everything that makes everything work holds it all together. We have apps, right? We have our friends app. We have our hobbies app, our career app. Maybe we have a spouse app. Maybe we have a kid's app or multiple kid's apps, depending on how many you have. And then there's one big app that, that we can't live without, and it's called our worldview app, right? Our worldview, the way we think about things, the way we see the world, the way we react to things, what drives us, what, what informs our decisions, all that kind of stuff, our worldview app. It's there all the time. 
It's the way we think. And of course, if our life is an operating system, we can have upgrades, right? There's the marriage upgrade, the college graduate upgrade, the have children upgrade, and all those upgrades require some update to all the apps, right? Because when you have kids, your friends app needs to be updated, your hobbies app most certainly needs to be updated, and then, you know, hopefully your career app gets updated so you can pay for the kids app, right? All that stuff kind of, it, it works just like technology, it's kind of like having an iPhone in my life. I, I am an iPhone, see that? You guys didn't know when you came in today that you were an iPhone, but you are. It's kind of, well, you're not, but, but life is like that. Or you can do like I do um, and choose not to upgrade your life, right? Just stay single and fun loving. And the problem with that is that all your other apps, your friends, they're upgrading their lives. They're upgrading their operating system. So eventually the same thing happens. Either your apps don't work because you've upgraded or your apps don't work because you failed to upgrade and you're kind of in this stuck place. Your apps just don't work very well unless you constantly upgrade the operating system of life. And then one day we go out to the app store and we find this upgrade to our operating system, the relationship with Jesus upgrade. That's a big one. Hopefully one day we all come to upgrade our lives to that version where we're walking with Jesus. And do you know that when you upgrade your life to the relationship with Jesus version, it comes with a free app called Abundant Life? Jesus promises this. I came so that you would have life and have it to the fullest, abundantly. And we really want that app to work, don't we? We really want that Abundant Life app to be fully functional and working and ever-present in our lives. In fact, we, we, we get into the point where we physically do the right things, we mentally assent to some of the things, we say the right words, and, and then what we realize is that at some point, the app's just not working the way we think it should work. Something is wrong with this Abundant Life app. Even when we want that new life promise, so often we fail to get there and we start to think that the Abundant Life app really isn't all it's cracked up to be, that maybe these words of Jesus when he says, I came to bring you life and so you can have it to the fullest, aren't real. But I want to tell you that the problem isn't with the app. The problem isn't with the relationship with Jesus upgrade in your life. What we're dealing with here is a compatibility problem. Just like technology, all of the apps we come into an upgrade with aren't always compatible with each other. We bring apps into this relationship with Jesus upgrade. And specifically, we bring our worldview app into this relationship with Jesus. And Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, uh, even though it was several thousand years ago, is talking about this compatibility problem that we all face. We're in uh, Paul's letter to the uh, church in Colossae, Colossians, Colossians, that's kind of hard for me to say. Chapter 2, so if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn there. If you have a Bible app. Now, what Paul's talking about here is that th there are some non-Jewish followers of Jesus Christ. And there was this big argument on both sides, from the Jewish side and from the Gentile side, on whether or not following Christ meant that you had to abide by all the Jewish rules. Lots of them. 620, plus or minus a few, rules. And Paul's talking that, that we don't have to abide. If we had this relationship with Jesus Christ, if we, have, if we have called him Lord and he is now the one ruling our lives, that we don't have to abide by the rules of the world, of man, anymore. And so we're going to start in Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. And here's what Paul writes to the church. He writes, Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of the world. In other words, you, your old self, was completely taken away when you decided to follow Jesus. Why then, since that is true, why as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? 
Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch these rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. And such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Paul outlines the compatibility problem right here. He says, you are no longer the person you were before you decided to upgrade your life to relationship with Jesus status. You're not that person anymore. You died with him. The old you went away. <laughs> he says, but the problem is that your worldview app hasn't been updated. You're still stuck in your old way of thinking. You're still stuck thinking that you have to be in submission to the rules of this world. Now, if you're like some of the really cool people, your apps automatically update. We kind of think that our life is going to automatically update as soon as we enter this relationship with Jesus. But that doesn't really happen. Our worldview doesn't automatically update. And without that update, we're just programmed to do what we've always done. We're programmed to follow the same rules that we've always followed. We're programmed to get up every morning and do the same thing we did yesterday. We're programmed to, to just let our worldview, the things of this world, the rules of this world, dictate our relationship with Jesus. And Paul says, if you do that, you're going to be stuck. It's not enough just to want something. It's not enough just to say the right words. You actually have to make a change at some point. Susie and I watch... Uh, show called My 600 Pound Life. Anybody ever seen that? So if you haven't seen it, the, the main kind of character of this show is a guy by the name of Doc. They call him Dr. Now. His name is really Dr. Now Zarden. He's a short, little, funny looking guy with a strange accent. I love him. And, and the premise of the show is kind of a documentary journaling a weight loss journey for people who start out at over 600 pounds. And, and I don't even know why they film like the first half hour of the show anymore because it's always the same. The people come in, Dr. Now, ask them a bunch of questions. How do you get like this? What do you eat? All this kind of stuff. And he says, Are, do you want to make a change? Are you ready to do this? Because I can give you the tools. And then he sends them out and he says, in the next two months, I want you to lose 100 pounds. If you lose 100 pounds in the next two months or 50 pounds or whatever it is, you lose 100 pounds, I'll approve you for weight loss surgery. Everybody that goes into that office wants the weight loss surgery. Everybody that goes into his office wants to lose the weight. But inevitably what happens is they come back two months later and they've either lost like 10 pounds or maybe they've even gained a couple of pounds because they want something and they say they want something and, and they've, they've said the right words and they've even gone to doctor now, but until they actually change their thinking, the way that they do things, they're never gonna be successful. And so eventually doctor now sends them to a psychotherapist who gets behind all the reasons why they eat and what triggers them and all this kind of stuff. And then miraculously, once they start changing their thinking, they start losing weight. Sometimes they fail, but most of them at that point actually get on the plan. Occasionally, Dr. Now will say, and, and what program are you actually on? Because nothing happens, right? They just, you know, it's kind of sad that way. But we do that too, right? Same with us. We have good intentions. When we, when we initially uh, upgrade our lives to relationship with Jesus status, then, then we want to do all the stuff. We want that abundant life, don't we? We want that life that is lived to the fullest and full of all the things Jesus promises us. But without a big shift, without an update to our worldview app, we're always going to go back to what we're programmed to do. It's human nature. We have carried this with us so long that it's hard to do anything else. I think there's two reasons why we find it so difficult to update our worldview app when we get to this point. And the first of those is, is that we're invested in all that went into creating our worldview, the way we think about things, and all that went into shaping our perception and, and, and the relationships we've had and the ideas we've had, just like on six, My 600 Pound Life, those people, 90% of them have turned to food because they've either suffered incredible abuse or bullying or, or some catastrophic tragedy in their lives. And, and, and food became something they invested their lives in. So it was really hard to get rid of it. And we do the same thing with our worldview. 
in, in my, my real job, I'm a software developer, and we always say to every client who comes and asks us for a bunch of stuff that you know time is money, right? It's an investment. And how much time have we spent forming our worldview? And we update our worldview app, but it's always based on what we want. And the second reason I think we're, we're kind of hesitant to update the worldview app is that we're just comfortable with it. We like it. We believe it's right for the most part. Nobody's going to tell me, I think, oh, well, I have a really flawed worldview. I've never heard anybody say that. We like where we've come from for the most part. We like sticking to our guns. We like our ideas. And Paul says, uh, that these things have only the appearance of wisdom. In verse 23, that's what he says. You can follow all those rules all you want. You can let your worldview dictate your relationship with Jesus Christ, but that only has the appearance of wisdom. And yet we're comfortable with it. So it's hard to change. It's not enough just to want change. It's not enough to say the words, I want to change. It's not enough to say, I want this abundant life. Just doing things won't work. We have to do the update. We have to update the app. And as old as this text is, that's exactly what Paul says in the next part of this passage. In, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, new life, raised with Christ, Set your heart on things above. And, and I'm not really in love with this translation because many of them say seek the things that are above or desire the things that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. I never knew that Paul was writing software manuals. But that's exactly what he's doing. He says in the first part that we read that you died with Christ. Your old life app is now gone. It's been deleted from your operating system. And then he says, and you were raised with Christ. So, so now we've got a new life that he promises. And he promises an abundant life. Life to the fullest. He says, but there's a problem, folks. It's not fully functional until we do the update. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I am actually ranked as a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Don't get all excited because I haven't lifted a leg in over eight years. So if anybody were to attack me now, I'd have to be like, I'm sorry, can you give me 15 minutes to stretch for a while? And then I'd run. But when I took my first degree black belt test, it was two of us testing. The test lasted five hours. And in addition to all the technique, the kicks and the punches and the, the forms and all that kind of stuff, there, there were at least three hours of that test were all just physical uh, endurance and conditioning and you know, jumping jacks and burpees and push-ups and squats and holding a 20-pound medicine ball, you know, all that kind of stuff. By the end of that test, I was wasted. I was just... I would have rather been dead than to accept a black belt at that point in time. That's how bad it was. But when I went to take my second degree test, um, I knew something had to change. You see, I wanted to be in good shape. I wanted to be a really cool Taekwondo black belt doing all that kind of stuff and not getting out of breath at the first kick. I wanted to do that, but up until that point, I hadn't really changed anything other than go to class and swing my legs around for a half an hour and then went home and did the same thing. So before my second test, I bought P90X. You guys familiar with P90X? If not, it's an at-home workout program. And I did it. And I did it three times. And when I took that second test, there were eight of us. I was 47, 43 years old when I took that test. All the other kids were like 16 and 17. At the end of it, I was standing there, not a drop of sweat rolling off my head. And they were all like on the floor, grabbing their knees, throwing up in a bucket. Okay. I wanted something. I had to make a change to get to where I was. And that is exactly what Paul is saying. He says, if you don't make a change, no matter how much you want, this abundant life is just not going to happen. Your life 
This abundant life, he says, is hidden with Christ. And the way to get it is to set your mind on the things above, not the things of this world. That is one of the verses in, this, in, in the scripture that is one of those easy, not easy things. The words themselves, when we read them, set your mind on the things above, are easy. We, we can say, oh yeah, that's easy, until you try to do it. Because it's incredibly difficult to get past all the old stuff that we brought in. It's incredibly difficult to update our app within our own power. It's kind of like an in-app purchase. You guys ever get those? You're, you're playing with an app and something pops up and says, hey, you want to you add this? And we say, no, 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 no. But you have to. When we're in this relationship with Jesus, we have to do the in-app purchase. We have to upgrade our worldview app. We have to set our mind on the things that are above. And not, do we, not only do we have to set our mind there, he says, you should want to set your mind there. Seek the things that are above. Desire the things that are above. It's an internal shift in the way we think. What does that mean, though, to set your mind on the things that are above? And that part is pretty easy. It means that we focus on God more. God is now the center of our lives. We focus on God's will in our lives, in our community, in our family, in his church. We pray for God's will. And we pray that we can listen and follow God's will. We spend time with God's word. A lot of time. We internalize God's truth that we are all hopelessly afflicted with the condition of sin. If not for the work of Jesus on the cross when he became that sin. For everyone. Everybody. For all time, for eternity. And how do we do that? How do we get to that place? How do we get to the place where we're always focusing on God and we're praying for God's will and, and, and we're, we're in, his, in his word and, 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 and we know his truth and, and we're willing to go out and spread it to the world? It starts with your calendar. None of us have a problem scheduling a dentist appointment or a doctor's appointment. We might even write, go to the gym three times a week, noon, right? Pick up kids, soccer. But if we want to get to this point where our minds are always focused on the things above, then we have to, in our internal calendars or on your physical calendar, whatever it is, you have to make time for God every day. Every day. And you have to pray. Pray for those things we just talked about. God's will. Pray for everything. Pray all the time, Paul says. Pray without ceasing. Always being in communication with God. Always making him a part of your life. Always thinking about what does he want from me. Not what do I want. We have to spend time in community. God didn't design us to be Christians in a closet. He designed us to be a family, a faith-based community, associating with each other, building each other up, giving each other pointers, and, and sometimes correcting each other when we get off track. That's what he designed. That's how the first church, we've, we've looked at the Acts 2 church and how they worked. They spent all their time together, and they multiplied. And worshiped. And I don't, I don't mean just, you know, come here on Sunday and sing a few songs. The act of worship, as relates to God, can be done anytime, anywhere. Thanking him for all that he's done for you. Looking out at the sunset and realizing that that's not even possible without him. He's the one who did it. Give him the glory for it. Worship. Time with God, prayer, community, 
and worship. And if we do those things on a consistent, regular basis, then our worldview begins to change. You know when you update your app and you get that little line that starts going across there and you're like, I can't wait, I can't wait, and the little circle goes like that? Well, that's what's happening to us all the time as we move more and more into having time with God and praying and spending time in His community and worshiping Him for everything that is in our lives. Then our little app indicator starts moving and we start updating that worldview app until eventually it's not what it used to be. Now it is in line with God and it's what he wants, not what we want. It becomes something in line with him, not something that just has the appearance of wisdom, as Paul says. But our goal in the end is to have this fully functional, abundant life app, right? Paul says, your life is hidden with Christ. And until we get to that place where our minds are set on him all the time, we're never going to be able to fully realize the life that he has designed for us. Because this life that is hidden with him, this, this full, abundant life that is hidden with him is so amazing and so wonderful and so complete. And why wouldn't you want that? It is a life that is designed on purpose to be filled with purpose. I think we could all benefit from having a little purpose driving our lives, not just the rat race, not just kind of treading water and trying to do the same things over and over again, right? The definition of insanity, you do the same thing over and over and over again, and you expect something different to happen. But it doesn't. It's only when we realize the purpose for which we were created to be in relationship with God, to be the tool He uses to heal this world. That is a fully functional, abundant life. And there's some other benefits because if we, if we continue to live by the tossing ways of this world, then we're always undergoing constant change, right? Every, it's different tomorrow than it was today. It's going to be different in a week. It's going to be different in a year. There's never any equal playing field to, to kind of get our bearings. We're always kind of trying to adjust to what's going on in the world, but with God, He never changes. He is unchanging. He is always constant. And no matter what happens in our life, that's why he says, I want you to have life to the fullest, no matter what happens outside, because he doesn't promise a great, wonderful, joyous life where we're always going to be smiling. But what he does say is, I will never leave. I am always going to be the same. I am always going to be the one unchanging anchor that you can count on. Abundant life is a life that is full and fulfilling and exhilarating, and, and many times exhausting. We get weary, but it's good weary, right? It's focused. It has purpose. It is the life we were designed for, every one of us. The reason it's so hard to get rid of our worldview is because think about all the stuff. I mean, even in this little thing, how many millions and billions of pieces of information could you, could you subject yourself to in just the space of an hour? Not only that, but then we, we read social media and we turn on the news and all this stuff, some of it terrible, horrible things. We were never designed to handle that stuff. We were designed to live in God's perfect world. He provided everything in Genesis 1. He set us up. And then man, we know the story, kind of messed that up. Right? You've seen those memes that say you had one job and it's like the stairway that goes into a wall. Right? Man had one job. Do not eat that. And we messed it up. And so we have to deal with that. But we can get as close to that as we, as we possibly can. If, if, if we are to just update the app. Abundant life, how? Abundant life, 
When? Where? Simple. Uh, we can start living that abundant life when we, when we set our minds on the things above. The easiest and most difficult thing to do. But if we're going to do that, if we want that abundant life, then we have got to upgrade the app, folks. We can't stay in the same place we were. We can't think the same things that only had the appearance of wisdom. We can't do that. Now, maybe you're in this place today and you have yet to upgrade your operating system to this relationship with Jesus version. Why not? What's stopping you? Wouldn't you like to be living a life that is filled with purpose, designed on purpose, for purpose? A life that relies on the unchanging anchor of God? A life that is as close to the way it was designed way back in Genesis chapter 1 as we're going to get on this earth until we're called home? You can download that upgrade. If you would like to do that, if that's on your heart, if you've been waiting, maybe just kind of saying, I'm not sure about this Jesus guy, I would love to talk with you and pray with you about that. Don't wait. Life is too short not to have the life that Jesus promised. Abundant life. Have to upgrade the app. God, we love you so much. And we're so grateful that you do promise that although we're not going to have a perfect life while we're here in this broken world, we can have a life that is as close to the one you designed. Full, abundant, life to the fullest. Help us all to just break the chains of our thoughts. To be willing to set our minds on you first and foremost and always. Help us to upgrade the app. Help us to change the way we think so that it becomes the way you think. Help us to know the life that you designed us for. God, we thank you so much for your word, for, for handing it down for so many generations so that we can know you and know about you and, and, and know how you want us to live this, this life. God, we thank you for the people who are here, and we ask that you protect them until we see them again next week. God, we pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and together as a church, we all say amen. Thank you, folks. We'll see you next week.